Well, tensions were high at the G20 summit after President Obama was disrespected by several of the world's top leaders. Is this now a sign that the international community doesn't see President Obama as a respected leader of the most powerful nation on earth? And if that is the case, what does it mean for all of us? Former U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. and American Enterprise Institute Senior Fellow John Bolton is here to weigh in. Ambassador, thanks for joining us. Glad to be with you. Uh, you know, we've seen some icy relationships uh, between President Obama and other foreign leaders, but this, this seemed to take the cake. <laughs> the guy from the Philippines, Vladimir Putin, China, I mean, they, they all just sort of lined up and disrespected him one after another. Well, it was a variety of different things, and I think with different causes, but I do think there's an underlying theme, and that is that, uh, number one, they, they appreciate that Obama's a lame duck. They're not going to have to deal with him much longer. Uh, and so now they can show a little bit of their personal feelings without necessarily uh, suffering any, any real consequences. But I think the larger issue is that they simply don't think that America under Obama uh, is, uh, is, is in need of the respect that uh, we've gotten before. Uh, as I say, these were from different uh, causes. I think the president of the Philippines, who had an unpleasant thing to say about the president, I, th I just think he's not politically correct. I think he, he talks that way to almost everybody. But in the case of China, the failure to put out the big steps for the president to come down from Air Force One was a deliberate snub in protocol circles. That's no accident. The Chinese have been doing this for 7,000 years. They understand exactly what they were doing. And Putin uh, not agreeing to a deal on Syria is just telling Obama the same thing he's told him for six years, but that neither Obama nor Hillary Clinton or John Kerry ever wanted to hear, which is he's going to look after Russian interests in Syria. He's not going to go along with what Obama wants. Ambassador, President Obama began his, uh, his presidency with what many are calling an apology tour. He went around the world. He was extraordinarily popular around the world. Uh, he met and greeted a lot of leaders. He talked about everyone being proud of their own nation, that kind of stuff. Uh, and then we fast forward to where we are right now. He was criticized for being, uh, you know, too, I don't know, too open with the rest of the world, too, too humble, if you will. Uh, does it, is there anything positive about the fact that, he's, that now these folks are looking at him a little differently, perhaps? Does it mean that he's done anything right, or is it just a personal, is it all about the personal uh, animosity or lack of respect for this president? Well, I think it's. Uh, I think there is the bigger picture about what they they can see that he has done to the United States. He has single-handedly deconstructed positions of strength and alliance structures we've built up for decades. Uh, he's reduced our powers of uh, deterrence. The the what really causes people to say we're not going to confront the United States uh, at all because the cost is too high. Uh, and I think it does reflect the spreading anarchy that we see around the world, particularly in the Middle East, but elsewhere as well as these structures, these positions of strength uh, erode around the world. So it shouldn't come as any surprise that this is, this is one of the consequences, and it's going to be uh, very difficult for the next president, whoever it is, to rebuild them. It's not simply what Obama has said. More importantly, it's what he's done, what he hasn't done on things like the military budget, which has been reduced drastically. Yeah, our manpower and everything else. It, you, you, you talk about the two presidential candidates, and I do wonder, because today I read where, the, uh, where Japan will now start to provide some sort of help for Philippine, Filipino ships that are trying to navigate around these uh, uh, contested South China Sea uh, islands and, and territories. Uh, you saw with the Iranian ships once again buzzing our, our, our ships. And this disrespect also has to sort of reflect on both candidates to a degree. What can they do to turn that around? What kind of, aren't they going to have to show some sort of strong force to get the world to sit up and pay attention that America is back? Well, I think the new president will have to do two things, one political uh, in the short term and one uh, resource-based in the long term. I have no expectation, by the way, that Hillary Clinton will do that. I think she is a third Obama term. But much like Ronald Reagan uh, taking office in 1981, they've got to send a political signal, uh, beginning with the inaugural address, that the policies of weakness that preceded them are going to change and that the United States is going to protect its interests, protect its people, uh, protect its friends and allies. 
allies. But then second, there is a major rebuilding job to be done uh, with the American military. And uh, that's going to cost money. Nobody ought to blanket that. It's going to cost uh, expenditures that are going to have to come right. out of domestic programs, even, even as we cut the overall budget. It's a long, hard road ahead. The damage Obama's caused is really substantial. Kind of reminds me of the old uh, telephone commercial, Can You Hear Me Now? I mean, we're going to have to do something right. to make sure they hear us now. Ambassador Bolton, always appreciate it. Thank you very much.